All right. What is up, baseball fans? Oh, my goodness. Did I just accidentally flex a Jeremy Affelt interview from, from last week? Oops. Let me go to this one. Let me go to this one. Hey, Monday Night Baseball is in the house. Dr. D is here. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to another installment of a tradition like no other. Well, I guess there are others like this. I guess there's a thing called Monday Night, <clears throat> another sport. And, uh, you know, that's fine and dandy, folks. But, you know, that's not till September. We've got this month. We Give us August for baseball. That's what we're doing today, Monday Night Baseball. Guys, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed. I hope your teams did well. Maybe your perfect teams did well in the postseason. Hope they did better than my uh, Oakland 42s. They did not do so well. Didn't make the postseason. Let me know in chat how you, you did this weekend. Did you make the playoffs? Did you get relegated? Did you get promoted? How did you guys do? <clears throat> we'd, love to, we'd love to hear that. I do need de- defense. My good friend Warbot TBD is going to be not happy when he finds out. He already knows that my Jimmy Fox has been moved to third base. Not going to go so well. Let's do this Monday night baseball. Baseball on a Monday night. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so a, a couple of things we're going to play. And uh, we're going to actually have some fun with that. Oh, baseball dreamland got relegated to gold. What happened? What happened? And uh, yeah, I am hooked on offense. I love me some offense. Well, you don't believe me? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the perfect team, the Oakland 42s, which might be a hint as to what our matchup is going to be tonight on Monday Night Baseball. Now, Typically, I leave it up to the good folks in the dynastic community to decide the matchup ourselves. And again, you can go ahead and give me a follow. You'll see just that. But uh, this week, we're mixing things up, and I'm going to actually uh, take the wheel. I'm going to get to pick my own matchup. And of course, you know, Oakland is going to be a part of this. So I got to get the athletics in there some way and somehow. Well, let's take a look at our team. And this is our lineup. We've got Canseco and Maguire. we got the Canseco Immortal. We've got the Maguire new diamond card. And uh, yeah, our Oakland 42s are, well, so far, okay. So far, okay. So just checking your chat, seeing where you guys are right now. What's, what, is your, um, what is your pursuit card? What's the card that is the object of your affection right now. What's the card he can't live without? I know one of you just picked up your coveted uh, Scott Rowland card. That was Red Sixer fan getting the Scott Rowland mission card. Congratulations on that. A-Rod, the 100 A-Rod, the perfect A-Rod for Mexi Memester. And I'm wondering what mine is now. Holy cow, can I get a starting pitcher? Oh my gosh, I've got three pitchers with ERAs at or above 6.28. Woof. Woof. Woof indeed. Oh boy. Can I please get some help? Um, Trying to get me a Lefty Grove, that would be amazing. Isn't this cute? My 57,000 PP bid on a Lefty Grove. <clears throat> that's not going to happen, is it? We've got uh, the future legends. James Wood would be nice. Tournament Babe Ruth for Ajax. Gorgo, hello. Got relegated to gold as well. Old Metal Possum, first time chatter. Uh, in my sixth season of PT now, made playoffs in stone, but lost in the division series. Again, so another season there for me. And I know many of us have been stuck in that same kind of rut trying to get out there. So good luck with that. Uh, my suggestion would be, as always, first thing you should always look at, perhaps, is upgrading your rotation. If it comes down to playoffs, if your team is doing well in the playoffs but not performing, if you're, if you're making the postseason but you're not getting through in the postseason, a lot of times for me it comes down to pitching. That's where I start upgrading my pitching staff. 
Uh, Underdog says missing your 97 Lavelle and 95 Zobrist to get build a team mantle. Oh, no. Yes. Okay. So you wound up sold selling them instead of locking them. Ah, I'm so sorry. That is so hard. I've, I've been there, done that. Been there, done that. Well, <clears throat> this is kind of the status of our team. Let's go ahead and open with some packs. First thing I'm going to do, open some packs. I'm not going to stop opening packs until I get at least a gold. And once we do so, we'll go ahead and uh, play a little game where you predict what is in the pack, in the gold or better diamond. Okay. Okay. Streamer code. The cheat code was enabled. Holy cow. Okay. So um, your mission, just give me a name in chat, who you think it's going to be, that diamond. What do you think? What do you think is going to be there? A Pete Crow. A Chase Utley. An Altuve. And Altuve is a great guess. In fact, I'm going to call the shot. I think it's going to be Altuve as well. I would love it. I would love a fourth Matt Olson. I think I'm up to three Matt Olsons, banking on that being promoted up to perfect. Dizzy Dean, Yandy Diaz. There's a Tatis in there, a Duke Snyder, an Arenado. Oh boy. Oh boy. A Mookie. Garrig? Oh, Gorgo. I would love to see a Garrig in there. If I get Garrig, I'm going to have to change my theme team. No. The button just came off my pants. That front, back, back pocket. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Nothing's falling down. I just got this, this suit. Come on. Okay, there's a Carol guess. Let's see what is behind this. Here we go. A Yelich. Okay, a Yelly, and I'm sure that is definitely a situation. We're going to go ahead and sell that almost immediately post haste. All right, let's go ahead and uh, 4289. That's the number. Two reasons. We love the number 42. And number two is the Oakland A's last World Series championship they had was 1989. So we'll go 4289 if you would like that. Go ahead and pursue it. Okay, um, as we lead up to game time here, again, the, well, the title gave away some of it. Okay, some of it right here. Um, said Bay Bridge Series Redux. Okay. But I haven't told you who's playing in this Bay Bridge Series Redux. And I tell you what, I love to, to involve the community. So I'm going to need your help in this. We already know there's just no way I'm not going to have the 1989 Oakland A's on this team. Now, the thing is, let me direct you to the scoreboard. This is my sponsor scoreboard on my stream that I share with you. Just got constructed over the weekend. Just got constructed over the weekend. And we, you know, we celebrate all the people who are in our community right there. And we're always looking for a title sponsor. If you ever want to do that, if you ever accomplish that mission, there's a sponsor showcase up and live on my Dynastic channel right now. I'll go ahead and throw that up there. You'd think I've had a hotkey for this, but I do not. That's my channel. In fact, anybody who like ends up following is going to see the name change up on the scoreboard right there. We have our followers, we've got our subscribers, we've got the gift subscribers, we've got the cheers, we've got the raiders, we've got all of it. Now, the reason I show this to you is that that scoreboard right there, does that look familiar to anybody? Does that look familiar? If you were to go to an out-of-the-park stadium, what does that scoreboard look like to you? Does it ring a bell? If you take out that handsome-looking guy in the picture, if you take out the words Dr. Dynastic, does that scoreboard, if you take the cards out, if you say, see that running crawl, if you take that out, what does that scoreboard look to you? Not candlestick, but you're getting somewhat warm, though it's not ever warm at candlestick point. And then maybe you look in the lower right. There's your first hint. Do you see a cable car? And then on the left, 
Maybe you see something as well. But look at the flags. And it pains me as an A's fan to even show that to you. <clears throat> but yes, that is the phone booth of San Francisco. It's been called Pac Bell, AT&T, all of that stuff. Oracle. But we know it as the phone booth. Yes, that is the Giants ballpark. San Francisco Giants ballpark. In my opinion, in my opinion, of all the stadiums I've gone to, the best Major League stadium out there. I've been to a few of them. That's number one on my list. Okay, so <clears throat> that being said, I want the 1989 A's to take on a team, a San Francisco Giants team. And I'm going to give you four options. And you're going to let me know in chat which one you want to see. Now, there are the odd year, or sorry, even year San Francisco Giants that won championships. And if you missed it, we had Jeremy Affelt from those championship teams on our stream last Wednesday. Okay. So that's 2010, 2012, 2014. Would you like to see one of those three teams you pick? Or, or would you like to see the San Francisco Giants of what year was it, Ezra Denny? Give me one, one season where the Giants, with Barry Bonds in the lineup, went to the World Series and came up just short. Got a year on that? Sorry to bring it up. Which year was that where the Barry Bonds had four home runs in that World Series? Went off. Went off. Which year was it? 2002. That is right. 2002. So in chat right now, I, I can't put up a survey or anything, but in chat, why don't you let me know, would you like to see those 2002 San Francisco Giants, which were denied a World Series championship, and would like to get a little redemption by going back in time and taking on the 1989 A's, Bay Bridge Series, or would you like to see 2010, 2012, or 2014? Let me know in chat. Let's see what you think. All right, we got uh, one for the 2002, a couple for 2002. Bailey OTP, Baseball Dreamland. Bailey wants to see, actually, oh, 2012. Okay, he threw a curveball at me. Went from 2021 to 2012. And while you discussed amongst yourselves, <clears throat> I am going to go to this page right here. And we're going to check out our PT Live squad. So keep them coming. Keep them coming. Now, on top of that, we are going to review my Perfect Team Live lineup, which is actually a first. I have never, ever in my life tried PT Live. I've been missing out. And today, I'm finally doing PT Live. I submitted my lineup for today. And Dusty Baker's kid will be there. Of course. Why wouldn't what's Dusty's kid's name? What was it? What was the what was the boy's name? Can't remember. I know a few people who would know the answer to that. Darren, that's it. Darren, thank you. <clears throat> so a couple of things I'm looking at. First of all, any games that would be wrapping up right now. My Cody Bellinger is playing. We would love to see that. Named after Darren Lewis. Former, what was it, center fielder for the San Francisco Giants. Darren Lewis. D. Lou, as they called him, right? <clears throat> 2002, as long as LeVon Hernandez does not pitch. Well, we can choose the pitcher. That is the nice thing about this, is we get to choose the pitcher. We're waiting on, has anybody else played PT Live? PT Live. If so, how are you feeling about your lineup so far? My Cody Bellinger, he is in progress. He is 0 for 2. Well. Tell you what, it's like playing fantasy football, but better. Bailey plays it every day. Well, 
We've got the lineup all set, so it's too early to start submitting a new roster for tomorrow. But there is our lineup for today as we uh, we get ready for PT Live, which is underway, 419 Pacific Time. <clears throat> One of the fire hydrants, fighting hydrants. Okay, I thought that said fire. Marvin Bernard. Oh, there's a blast from the past. Marvin Bernard. Nard Dog, as he liked to be called. Okay, well. I'm getting a lot of love for 2002. And I was hoping you would say that. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and start this up right here. We'll go historic. And if you haven't seen this before, this is how we do it. Pretty simple. Uh, we're going to set a World Series. We're going to set it best of three because tomorrow that series will continue on my channel, Dr. Dynastic. We'll continue that series tomorrow. We'll go one away, one, or sorry, one home, one away, one home. We shall in this enable the DH. The designated hitter will be allowed. We will have the away team be the 1989 Oakland Athletics. You heard that right. The A's are going to be on the road. I'm stacking the deck against the A's. And then we're going to go with the 2002 San Francisco Giants. Look at this, folks. Barry Zito up against his old team. Almost isn't fair. And we will set that to 2002 settings. We will send it to end of season rosters, 25 man roster injuries in. Uh, we'll enable the injuries, I suppose. Yeah, we'll disable, disable those injuries. <clears throat> Let's see what this gives to us. Hopefully I haven't missed anything glaring. And. We will go ahead and look at our lineups. Make sure there's no glaring omissions here. There's Billy Bean. Does that guy look familiar? Remember Billy Bean? Yeah, he was on the 89 A's. <clears throat> Storm Davis does not make the roster. Now they stack it because it's a best of three series, I suppose. And that's why you don't see Storm or Kurt Young on there. As well. Interesting. Interesting. And no Rick Honeycutt. No Rick Honeycutt for real in 1989. Rick Honeycutt, the loogie himself. That needs to be rectified. We need to fix that. That's going to be our first thing. Look at Mike Norris. This is an interesting one. Mike Norris didn't even pitch in the regular season in 89. I believe he was a spring training tryout. And Mike Norris made a massive comeback attempt. We'll go ahead and take that out. And maybe I'm already regretting taking injuries off. That might have been a big dodo. We'll go ahead and throw the 19 game winner Storm Davis in. No, yes, no, yes, yes. And we'll also take out. Let's see how many pitchers we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Only ten pitchers. Well, we've got to change that. So we can take uh, some of these people out of here. Though I don't know who on earth you would take out. I don't know who you take out of this. Probably Ken Phelps. Yeah, we'll take Ken Phelps out, though that will make things interesting for a backup situation for Mark McGuire. They'll have to live with it. And in, in his place, we're going to throw Rick Honeycutt in there. Okay, that takes care of that. And now let's take a look at the Giants. Ezra Denny, any other Giants fanatics out there, please let me know if there's any glaring omissions. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pitchers as well. Uh, we got to get Kirk Reader in there. Reader has got to be in there. That is a glaring omission. So who do we take out? Probably Damon Miner. He's a Woody Stan. 
Do we have Woody in there? We are going to take out. Bill Miller's going to stay in. Uh, Reader is there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ramon Martinez might. Hmm. Ah, that is true. That is true. We're going to take Damon Miner out. <clears throat> and we're going to put in Kirk Reeder. Sound good? Sound ecumenical? Let's go with that. And then we'll go ahead and uh, set ye old lineups. Um, let's go ahead and, first of all, Dave Stewart or Mike Moore. Hmm. <clears throat> we will go with, I got to have smoke. I got to have smoke as your starter. You got to have smoke. Did Torcato make the lineup? Let's go ahead and check. Actually go back to the A's very quickly. Uh, Lansford did not make the starting lineup. As a 336 hitter. Come on. What's going on here? Cardi Lance for not in the lineup. That's that's a problem. Mike Gallego as her second baseman. I have no problem with that. Tony Phillips. Tony Phillips, you're going to be in all over the place. You'll be backing up everybody. Tony could even probably back up in the outfield, but we'll go ahead and leave that. And then Ricky Henderson. <laughs> We want Dave Parker in the outfield over Ricky Henderson? No, I don't think so. That's not happening either. And also, Jose Canseco is not in the lineup. Okay, good thing we're catching these things. Uh, Jose Canseco in for Felix Jose. They had the wrong Jose in there. So we got a lot of things to do here. Now, a professional would have set this up before, but this is no professional. Okay, so we're going to go Carney. Uh, we got to get the greatest leadoff man in baseball history as the leadoff man. Ricky batting first, Carney batting second, Canseco batting third, McGuire batting fourth, Hendu, a little bit of a down year. We'll have Hendu bat sixth, Steinbach batting seventh, Weiss batting eighth, Gallego batting ninth. I can, I can deal with all of those things. Go A's indeed. Finally, we have an A's fan in the house. Hard to find these days. Jeff Kent will have to move up in the starting lineup. Again, curious decision not to have Jeff Kent as a starter. 313 average, 37 home runs. My, oh my. Barry in left. Goodwin in center. Reggie Sanders in right. Kenny Lofton is your DH. Aurelia at short, Miller at third, Yorit Torialba at catcher. Well, um, Ezra, if you have any uh, compunction about that, if you'd like to see anybody move into the starting lineup, please let me know. Otherwise, we will go with that. And our order as well. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Hmm. Do you put... An old Kenny Lofton in at the leadoff spot? Probably not. Bonds was decent at that point. Bonds was still good. He was still serviceable. Still serviceable. Though now I'm thinking maybe Goodwin's not the right choice to be in the outfield. Maybe you put, maybe we put Lofton in and center. There's also Marvin Bernard. I don't know. We could go all day long. And we could, let's see, Bonds is going to bat third, no doubt about that. Kent would bat cleanup, no doubt about that. JT Snow, probably number five. Now the question, top of the order. And do you put an aging Kenny Lofton in the leadoff spot? This is where it gets interesting. Now that JT Snow could, no. Down a year. We could probably put Reggie in the number two spot. Jeff Kent, everybody. Jeff Kent. Not enough love for Jeff. Lofton did lead off in the series. We will live with that. 
I think everything else is good enough. Bill Miller could move up in the order. Aurelia 2, Kent 3, Bonds 4. Well, then who protected Bonds? Why on earth would you have Bonds? There's no way. You put Bonds in 3. Ezra, is this what the Giants did or is this what you want? Because I'm thinking put you want as many ABs. I mean, hey, if you, I, I will take it. As an A's fan, if you want to have Barry Bonds batting 4th, Oh, Santiago fifth. We could get Santi in there for your beat. All right, let's go with the actual lineup. Why not go professional? All right, so uh, Aurelia batting two. This is why the Giants lost the World Series. But hey, if you want to shoot yourself in the foot again, let's do it. Uh, Barry Bonds four. Santiago five. Okay, okay, Dusty. Dusty, you like that. Uh, Sanders, oh, there's a pack drop. Yes, please. Santiago, five. Sanders, six. Snow, seven. Bell, eight. Bell, Bell, what position is Bell here? I guess third. David Bell's going to be third base. Bell, and then, oh, Shinjo. I don't even know if we have him. We don't even have him. So that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Wouldn't Benito be 73? We don't have uh, Shinjo, unfortunately. So we're going to go with, uh, you You choose, Marvin Bernard or Tom Goodwin. You decide, Chet. This, this is a team here. All right. I already like the ace chances. Let's go with Goodwin. I think we're good. Good win. Jason Schmidt as a starter. No duh. No doubt. That's happening. And we'll have Russ Ortiz and LeVon in a winner-take-all game three if that happens. Okay. Let's go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. <clears throat> Did I put Bernard in there? Let's see. Last check here. Marvin Bernard. Well, if that's the case, if we set the Giants and Nard Dog here at DH, do we want Bernard or Lofton in the outfield? I think we want Lofton. There we go. Good enough for the girls I date. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, so this is the Bay Bridge Series Redux. Are you guys ready? I need a little bit of hype. Let's get excited, guys. Come on. What is it, Monday? Ladies, oh, hold on. I just I welcome the ladies and not the gentlemen. I need to record this. I need to record this because I need to post it to YouTube. That's how it goes. All right, folks, welcome to the pregame show. It's brought to you by Cubs Fan 23, Steve. It is Monday Night Baseball. We're inside the Dynastic Studios. We're giving you a pregame report, a preview of tonight's matchup. It is the Bay Bridge Series Redux. As we break things down, who has the upper hand, the 1989 Oakland Athletics or the 2002 San Francisco Giants? Bay Bridge Series Round two, we'll start with the leadoff spot. Ricky Henderson versus Kenny Lofton. I don't know. Greatest leadoff hitter of all time against an aging has-been center fielder. I guess I would go with Ricky. All right, batting second. I don't know. A guy who hit 336 on the season against a 257 hitter? Well, for whatever reason, we think Rich Aurelia is superior to Carney Lansford. All right, batting third. You have an injured Jose Canseco, plagued by a wrist injury for the first part of the season. Not quite up to 100%. Slight advantage, Jeff Kent in the cleanup spot. Barry Bonds versus Mark McGuire. Well, that seems like a no-brainer. 
Barry Bonds gets the advantage. 46 home runs and a preposterous 3-7-0 batting average. In the five spot, Benito Santiago or Dave Parker. Benito, we understand, is 72 years old. Dave Parker, probably about five years younger. That will be a tie. That's a push. Reggie Sanders versus Dave Henderson. There's a typo here. It says San Francisco. But we all know that Dave Henderson is the greatest baseball player of all time. In the seven spot, J.T. Snow or Terry Steinbach. Advantage, Terry Steinbach. At the eight spot, David Bell, slight nod over the former rookie of the year, Walt Weiss. And in the nine spot, it's a push between Mike Gallego and Marvin Bernard. And those of you who know Mike Gallego, his <clears throat> history with things below the belt will get the irony that Gallego is a push against Nard. Gallego? Nard. And between the pitchers, Jason Schmidt and Dave Stewart. Advantage, Jason Schmidt. Okay, here we go, folks. That has been the pregame show. It's brought to you by Cubs Fan 23 Steve. Let's go and play some baseball. And folks, welcome to Pac Bell Park Bay Bridge Series Round 2, 1989 Oakland Athletics, 2002 San Francisco Giants. We all remember what happened back in 89. Oakland won games 1 and 2 on their home field at the Coliseum. The Giants were ready to bounce back in that World Series in Game 3. Well, there was quite the bounce in Game 3. It was the earthquake series, seismic activity in the Bay Area, deadly earthquake postponing that World Series until it was finally resumed and the A's promptly swept the Giants out of the World Series. Many in the conspiracy community think the Giants should have, would have, could have won that World Series if not for the earthquake. They'll totally disregard the 2-0 series deficit and say the Giants would have won at Candlestick had there not been an earthquake. We're going to find out because we not only have taken a Giants team from the past, we've actually taken a better Giants team from the past. And this one, I would argue, is every bit as good or maybe even better than that 1989 San Francisco Giants team. Of course, we're talking about the 2002 San Francisco Giants. Now, that being said, there's no Will Clark. There's no Kevin Mitchell. There's no Rick Russell. There's no Steve Bedrosian. But what they do have is Barry Bonds. You roll all those players up, you might just get Barry Bonds. Let's take a look at your weather report. It is brought to you by It's Enrico Palazzo. Game time temperature here at Pac Bell Park. It is 60, deg 60 degrees with clear skies. Wind blowing out to right at 10 miles an hour. That has been your weather report brought to you by It's Enrico Palazzo. And now let's bring you the starting lineups. They're brought to you by Hertz Donut. Next time you're in Cedar Falls, Iowa, you might just find really vanilla gorilla at Hertz Donut. Open 25-8. Want a Hertz? Hertz Donut, the best in Cedar Falls. Defensively for the National League champion, San Francisco Giants, 2002. The former Gold Glover had an outstanding career with the Cleveland Indians. Kenny Lofton in center his first year with the Giants here in the National League. Had a brief go around in the NL with the Braves as well. And bookending Lofton in the outfield. Reggie Sanders to his left out and right. And the future Hall of Famer. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Barry Bonds will one day be in Cooperstown. Of course, from our perspective in 2002, Barry Bonds is out in left. Around the horn we go defensively on the infield. Bell, Aurelia, Kent, Snow, another gold glover. Former San Diego Padre, Benito Santiago behind the dish and on the hill. Coming over from the Pittsburgh Pirates a couple years ago, Jason Schmidt. 
Schmidt on the year, 13 wins, 8 losses, 3-4-5 ERA. He is a strikeout pitcher, 196 Ks in 185 innings pitch. He'll pitch in the mid-90s, boasting a very strong fastball, fantastic changeup, solid slider, and an occasional curveball. Offensively for the 89 A's, it doesn't get any better than the man of steel, Ricky Henderson. He'll be your leadoff man. Mr. 336, yeah, Carney Lansford, fantastic season for the 89 Athletics, one of the more underrated members of this team. Carney Lansford batting second. 345, you've got some big boppers there. Canseco, McGuire, and Parker batting sixth. Mr. October, well, of course, Reggie Jackson might have that title, but Dave Henderson close behind. Hendu will bat sixth. He'll be followed by Steinbach, Weiss, and Gallego. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by Hertz Donut. And with that, it is time to play some baseball. Let me know in chat who you are rooting for tonight. The 1989 Athletics or the 2002 San Francisco Giants. All right, let's get you your first pitch. Brought to you by the 5280 DeMoss. First pitch coming in at 4.40 p.m. Pacific time on Monday Night Baseball. Jason Schmidt rocks and fires 3-2 pitch. Ground ball, shortstop, throw to first, is in time. And Ricky Henderson is retired. And we're going to change those camera settings for just a moment. Because we like to see the action. We can get as close as we want. All right, folks, that brings up Carney Lansford. I see some love for the A's. And, of course, the guy who lives in Alameda County is rooting for the Giants. He's on the wrong side of the bay, apparently. Bay Bridge Series, round two. Ding, ding. Here we go. And Carney Lansford on the 2-1 offering. Carney grounds to first base. JT Snow unassisted for out number two. And that brings up Jose Canseco. Canseco coming off a mammoth season. Baseball's first ever 40-40 player. 42 home runs, 40 stolen bases on the way to MVP honors where he hit 307 and drove in 124 runs. Canseco, though, missing much of spring training and the first half of the season with a broken wrist. Canseco, though, appears to be healthy, has his strength back. Don't know what kind of Wheaties he's eating for breakfast, but he is healthy and ready to go. The 1-2 to Jose, and he hit him. Jose Canseco gets hit in the ankle. That hit by pitch is brought to you by Gristle Whistle. Yeah, there was a little whistle on that Gristle. Canseco now on first for Mark McGuire. McGuire. Fantastic rookie year, 1987. Breaking Al Rosen's all-time single-season rookie home run record. Al Rosen, of course, part of the San Francisco Giants front office for many years. Rosen was the man who held that record for most home runs by a rookie until Big Mac came along in 1987 and hit 49 round trippers. This year, the average is considerably down, 231, though he did hit 33 home runs in the regular season. Jason Schmidt looking in for the sign from Santiago. From the stretch, here's the 1-1. They run the pitch out. Throw to second will be in time. Boy, what a call by Dusty Baker dialing up that pitch out, and they get Canseco stealing at second. We head to the bottom of one in San Francisco in the Battle by the Bay. Wow.
And folks, welcome back to Pac Bell Park. Bottom of one here between the A's and the Giants. 1989 versus 2002. Which was the better year for you? Were you around then? Let me know in chat. 1989. For me, that was the zenith of baseball. A's, Giants, Bash Brothers, Pacific Sock Exchange. Holy cow, what a year, 1989. A year that the A's wound up winning the World Series against the Giants. Let's introduce your starting lineups. We will start offensively with San Francisco on their home field. Kenny Lofton. Fantastic leadoff man for the Cleveland Indians way back when. Back started his career with the Houston Astros. Then came over to Cleveland one year later. And consistently one of the best base runners in Major League Baseball, including a career high 75 stolen bases during the 1996 season. Kenny Lofton will be your leadoff man. Rich Aurelia, the defensive shortstop, a little bit of pop for Aurelia as well. 37 home runs one a year ago in 2001. The home run totals coming down significantly since then. But boy, what a season Rich Aurelia had last year in San Francisco. Three, four, five, part of the order. Kent, Bonds, and Santiago. That will be the question here tonight. Will the Giants have enough protection around Bonds to make sure he does not get issued yet another walk, an intentional walk? 198 base on balls this season in 2002. Santiago will bat fifth. Sanders, Snow, Bell, and Bernard batting ninth. He'll DH. Defensively for the Oakland Athletics, the champions of the American League and of Major League Baseball in 1989. Ricky and Dave, the Hendersons, out in left and center. And out in right is Jose Canseco. On the corners, Carney Lansford at third. Mark McGuire at first. Weiss and Gallego up the middle. Behind the dish, Terry Steinbach. And on the bump, three-time 20-game winner, Dave Stewart on the hill. Those are your starting lineups. They're brought to you by Hertz Donut. And it only took about two minutes, but we got our first Jose Canseco head joke. Congratulations, Ezra Denny. You win the... Jose Canseco, baseball, bounce off the noggin, out and right, and over the wall, Joe. Kenny Lofton, your leadoff man. Dave Stewart going to work here in the first. Payoff pitch on 3-2, taken outside for ball four. Well, there's the Cardinal sin walking the leadoff man. Lofton is aboard. Kenny only played 46 games this year for the Giants. Somewhat limited duty this year for the Giants after coming over from Chicago. Seven stolen bases in 10 attempts. Still has speed and watch out. And here's Rich Aurelia. We mentioned the season Aurelia had in 2001. 324 average, 37 home runs. Had 206 hits as well. Numbers down this year, but Dusty is going to trust him here in that number two spot in the lineup. Stewart from the stretch. First pitch. Runner going. Throw down a second. Another caught Steely. So, Kenny Lofton caught Steely. Let's take another look at the replay. It's brought to you by the Tiny New. Bang, bang play, but no doubt about it. Steinbach gunned him down. And there's one down. Now, Aurelia with the bases empty. 1-1 from Stewart. Fly ball, left field, near the track, and Ricky makes the snatch catch out in left. Two down. Jeff Kent digs in. Jeff Kent coming over from Cleveland. Before that, he was a New York Met. And before that, yeah, started out in the Toronto Blue Jays farm system. In fact, got one season in, about half a season before he was shipped off to the Mets. With Toronto really missing out on that because Jeff Kent has really blossomed, especially here in his 30s. After turning 30 in 1998 with the Giants, 
31 home runs, 128 RBI. And this year, 37 homers and 108 RBI to go with a 313 average. He'll bat third, and he's at the plate right now. First pitch to the second baseman, Kent. And he laces a base hit to center. One hopper to Dave Henderson out in center. And it's a two-out single for Jeff Kent. Jeff Ken on first, and now it's Barry Bonds, a season for the ages. Some would say that his 73 home run season of 2001 may be the greatest of all time. Some way, somehow, he might have done even better here in 2002. 370 batting average, 46 home runs, 110 RBI, 117 runs scored, and one. 198 base on balls. The numbers you'll see that stand out the most. No, he did not break his own home run record this year. Would have taken 74 to do that. But the 370 batting average, a 582 on base percentage, and a slugging percentage of 799. You add it all up, that OPS actually a hair better than it was during that 73 home run season 1.381 OPS my goodness Barry Bonds digs in up against Dave Stewart the 3-1 they will walk him and that is probably a good decision even with first base occupied not surprisingly Barry Bonds issued his first base on balls was not intentional but he only got one strike in that sequence and this is where that protection really kind of sinks in is Benito Santiago going to make the A's pay for pitching around Barry Bonds two on two out Stewart looks in for the sign from Steinbach the 0-1 gets through Steinbach so both runners will advance they'll charge the wild pitch to Stewart Kent to third Bonds to second so the Giants certainly threatening right now with Benito Santiago at the plate. Santiago takes a deep breath and now steps in up against Stewart. The 2-2, grounded a third. Carney Lansford is there. Throw to first will be in time. Giants strand two in scoring position. And at the end of one, we are scoreless in San Francisco, California. All right, take a look at your affiliate schedule on your screen right now. Want to get those drops anytime throughout the week for your pack drops on your screen right now. Our fine network of affiliate streamers. Not updated for yours truly. Jerry, Jeremy Affa was our guest last week. But we'll still be on at 11 a.m. Pacific on Wednesday this week. All right, let's get back to playing some baseball. All right, top of two at Pac Bell. McGuire will be your leadoff man. Mark McGuire at the plate. Base is empty as he will start the second inning. McGuire, who was caught with the bat in the hand, watching Jose Canseco get caught stealing. This time, swings and misses on strike three. So Canseco ran him out of the inning in the first, and then McGuire strikes out to start the second. And that brings up Cobra. Yeah, it's Dave Parker, everybody. A little late career magic for Dave Parker. 264 average, 22 home runs, 97 RBI. Dave Parker, just over 300 home runs, crossed that threshold earlier in the 1989 season. Longtime former Pittsburgh Pirate, then with the Cincinnati Reds in the mid 80s, and now here in Oakland in the twilight of his career. Dave Parker up against Jason Schmidt. One, two, on the way. Parker looking, strike three, called. That strikeout is brought to you by Podman 19. Experience the ultimate getaway. Book your trip today to America's finest city, San Diego, with Podman 19. 
And now it's Dave Henderson at the play. Fan favorite. If this game were played in Oakland, you would find Hendoland out in center field. No signs saying Hendoland here. Just a whole lot of orange and a smattering of green in these bleachers. And who jumps on the 2-1 pitch, grounds to short. Easy play for Aurelia, and the side is retired. We go to the bottom of two in San Francisco, scoreless between the Giants and the A's. Got to roll back through chat here. Just seeing where everybody was in the year 1989. Flick of the wrist, born in April of 89. All right, so you were around at least for opening day. You just probably don't remember it. And, of course, Cubs fan 23 Steve remembers the heartbreaker of 1989 for his beloved Cubbies. Of course, the Giants that year beat the Cubs to get to the World Series. And don't forget about tearing down the wall. 1989. There we go. Reggie Sanders leading things off for the 0-2 Giants. It will be Sanders, Snow, and Bell. Scheduled hitters against Dave Stewart, who's already walked two in this one. Stewart's 1-0 pitch. It's flown to right. That falls for a base hit. So Sanders goes the other way. He picks up a leadoff single. Don't sleep on Sanders, folks. Former 30 stolen base guy with Cincinnati and with San Diego. Twice he's stolen 36 bags in a season. And this year, 18 swipes in 24 attempts. Got to think, we've already seen two stolen base attempts. I would imagine Sanders might get the green light here up against the righty Dave Stewart. Stewart looks over his shoulder, takes a peek over at first. And here's a pitch to Snow. Runner going, and we will not get a throw this time. Steinbach lost his grip on that one. So as expected, Reggie Sanders takes off running. He is on second with a stolen base. And now it's JT Snow, former California Angel. For a first baseman, not a lot of power. His highest home run total came in 1997, his first season here in San Francisco, when he hit 28 home runs. But those numbers have been trending downward. And this year, those numbers as low as it gets. In fact, a career low, six home runs in 143 games. J.T. Snow. J.T. Snow at the plate, up against Stewart. 0-2. Oh, Runner going, and oh, they're going to call a balk on Stewart. So Sanders gets a free pass from second to third as Stewart is called for the balk. So Sanders now 90 feet away, and J.T. Snow. Full count pitch to Snow. He takes the walk. A third base on balls from Stewart. Snow on first. Sanders on third. Sets the table for David Bell. Two on. Nobody out. Stewart. First pitch. Fly ball. Right field. Should be deep enough. Catch made by Jose Canseco. What a grab. The run does come in to score. Canseco, take another look at this robbery brought to you by Brent3232. Like an Idaho potato, that one is in the basket. Nice play by Canseco. Any play where it doesn't go off his head, I suppose, is a good one. And the Giants draw first blood. So a sacrifice fly credited to Bell to make it one to nothing. Snow on first for Marvin Bernard. Bernard. Base hit up the middle. They will wave the runner. Throw to third. Will not be in time. JT Snow with a full head of steam in the third on the base knock. Look at that base running. Here's a replay brought to you by Sean Paxlayer. JT Snow not fleet of foot, but folks, 
those pistons were bumping the entire way. Snow into third, Bernard on first, and Kenny Lofton at the plate. Stewart trying to get out of this jam. Boy, he would love to roll up a double play here. Infield is playing back. They will concede the run. They're playing for a double play. 2-2. Two -two. There's a fly to center. Sliding catch by Dave Henderson. The runner will come in to score, but another fantastic play by the A's outfield. Here is your replay brought to you by Mexi Memester, Dave Henderson making a great play. Snow comes in to score. Two to nothing, Giants. So a couple of sacrifice flies for San Francisco. Rich Aurelia, fly to right. Jose is underneath it for out number three. Two runs come in for the Giants at the end of two. It's the 2002 San Francisco Giants leading the A's two to nothing. All right, folks, top of three in San Francisco on this cool October evening. Five o'clock Pacific time. Welcome and glad to have you here on Monday Night Baseball. Well, the bottom of the order produced for the Giants. Now we'll see if the A's can respond in kind. Seven, eight, and nine batters for the A's. Steinbach, Weiss, and Gallego. Terry Steinbach leading things off against Jason Schmidt. Schmidt coming over midseason from the Pirates. Jason Schmidt, who after that trade last year in 2001, 7 and 1 record in 11 starts, 3.39 ERA. Really adding the one thing maybe the Giants didn't have and that was a bona fide ace. That is what the Giants hope they have in Jason Schmidt. Steinbach, former All-Star catcher, here's the 1 2, looking at strike 3. There's a strikeout as he goes down looking. Third K for Schmidt. Bringing up the former Rookie of the Year, Walt Weiss. Three years in a row, the Oakland Athletics had a Rookie of the Year. 1986, it was Jose Canseco. 1987, it was Mark McGuire. And 1988, it was Walt Weiss. Known more for his glove than his bat. But Walt Weiss continuing that trend three straight Rookie of the Year honors for the Oakland Athletics from 86 to 88. And here we go, Schmidt from the windup. First pitch to Weiss. Weiss grounds down the line. Nicely gloved by Snow. J.T. Snow. We talked about his offensive deficit. But defensively, definitely a plus. Look at this backhand play. J.T. Snow hugging that line, makes the play, gets the play at first unassisted. So Mike Gallego now digs in. Light hitting second baseman Mike Gallego. 252 hitter this year. Three home runs this season as well. Eight lifetime home runs in 1,005 career plate appearances. Gallego on the 2-2. Two, two. And he smokes a base hit to left. Right on the screws. Jumped on that fastball. Line drive, base hit to left. Gallego on first for Ricky Henderson. Ricky coming over. After a bit of a run with the Yankees, of course, he started his major league career with the Oakland Athletics back in 1979. He would go on to break Lou Brock's single-season stolen base record, 130 steals in 1982. He was shipped off to New York in 1985, went to the Yankees, and now back to Oakland here in 1989. The A's are really looking forward to a full season of Ricky in 1990. 
Here's the 0-1 to Henderson. Grounder, shortstop. They'll get the force at second. There will be no re relay because that will do it. They get the force at second. And we head to the bottom of the three in San Fran. Game 5, 2002, Ezra really thought the Giants were going to win the World Series. LeVon Hernandez had other ideas. Well, this is why we play the game. No LeVon, no problem. Part of the Giants order, Kent, Bonds, and Santiago here against Dave Stewart as we start the bottom of the three. Kent grounds the short. Throw to first will be in time. Walt Weiss with a nice play. Kent is retired. Bases empty, one out. Barry Bonds. What do you do here? Let's take a cutaway shot of Tony LaRussa. He's having and hawing a little bit here. They look like they've got the sign in. They're going to go after him. Two, two, swing and a miss for strike three. They went after Bonds with the bases empty, and Bonds strikes out. Boy, Dave Stewart had a little bit of extra. Cheese whiz on that fastball. 93 on the gun. Bonds is retired. One more look here. Replay brought to you by Lowry 6850. That brings up Benito Santiago. Santiago starting his career in 1986 with the San Diego Padres. Wound up winning Rookie of the Year honors one year later. In 1987, went on a mammoth hitting streak that year on the way to hitting 300. And then it became decision time. What do you do with Santiago when you have another fantastic catcher on the way up? Sandy Alomar Jr. What is a team to do to have two all-star caliber catchers behind the dish? Can you imagine that? Santiago and Sandy Alomar Jr. Santiago behind in the count. Here's the 0-2. Santiago swinging him is for strike three, and that will do it. Dave Stewart has his mojo back at the end of three. It's the Giants two and the Athletics nothing. All right, folks, another look at your affiliate schedule. Don't forget to support all of your affiliates, including, can I get a shout out? Can I get an attendance call, a roll call here? Who among you is an affiliate streamer? I can name at least one here. Ezra Denny is the one. Ezra is asking, who was your favorite A's team? That's a great question. That is a great question. A little bit of background. Went to my first ever Oakland A's game in 1985. I remember upper deck seats. I remember Dave Winfield and the Yankees coming to town. That was the very first A's game I ever went to. 1985. Nersha Banco is in the house. Nersha, what is up? One of our fantastic affiliate streamers. Please give him a follow. Please give Ezra a follow. Please give me a follow. Me. Remember, all you have to do, click a name. Click a name in chat. And then there will be an icon. You can just click follow. It's that easy. It's that easy, folks. And there's another list of fantastic affiliate streamers. Just a sampling of fantastic affiliate streamers. Uh, my favorite A's team would probably be the 1988 team. Of course, the 89 team is the one that won the World Series. The 88 team, though, had Canseco as a 40-40 guy. Dave Henderson had a fantastic season. Dave Stewart, Dennis Eckersley, all the guys who were part of the 89 team. I guess, could I just say the 88 through early 90s? Can Will that ex be acceptable? I wasn't around for the 70s World Series teams. I was around for the mid-80s teams. They were brutal. I was around, obviously, for the Moneyball era A's. But my favorite, I always think back to the late 80s, Canseco, McGuire, Lansford, Henderson, Eckersley, Hassey, Steinbach, Weiss, Gallego, Bob Welch, 
27 game winner, Bob Welch, in 1990. All of it. Yes. Yes, please, Eric. All right, let's get back to some baseball. Top of four in San Francisco, 2002 uh, Giants in control. Couple of sacrifice flies scoring runs in the second inning. That's been enough for the Giants so far. How long will Jason Schmidt, though, be able to keep a lid on this A's offense? And here's a base hit to center. So Carney with a leadoff single. And yes, how about that? Billy Ball days, Channel 44. Remember KICU TV 36? My oh my. Carney Lansford is on first for Jose Canseco. 2-2 two, two to Jose. Check swing, strike three. Another strikeout recorded for Jason Schmidt. Fourth K for Schmidt. Another look here on your replay. Brought to you by Griner MB282. <laughs> K-I-C-U. You should see us now. Boy, I miss those catchphrases from the 1980s. What was the other thing? The ad campaign? Was it something like bits and pieces or something? It was the community service for KTVU Channel 2 in the 80s. Lansford on first for Mark McGuire. 2-2 to Big Mac. Big Mac fly ball left field. Barry Bonds is underneath it, and he makes the grab. Runner retreats back to first. Two down. Dave Parker now at the plate. Glue. I need glue. You shouldn't borrow things without asking. Only like five people are going to get the reference. Totally worth it. Lansford on first for Dave Parker. Parker on the 2-2, going the other way. Jam shot, base hit. They'll hold the runner at second. They will hold the runner. Lansford to second. Parker to first. Dave Henderson now steps in. Hendu with that glorious Fu Manchu. At the plate, two on, two out. The 2-1, Hendu, fly to right, caught. Out in right by Sanders as the side is retired. A strand two going to the bottom of four in San Francisco. Reggie Sanders, your leadoff man, as we begin the bottom of the fourth. Battle of the Bay, 2002 Giants, 1989 Athletics. 2-1 on the way to Reggie. Sanders grounds to first. Mark McGuire will take it unassisted for out number one. And now it's J.T. Snow. Snow on the one, two, going the other way. High fly ball, deep left field, and gone! An oppo taco! Opposite field home run from J.T. Snow. And the Giants are out to a 3-0 lead. That Oppo Taco brought to you by RK Brossi. When you need a little pick-me-up, try the Oppo Taco. When your game needs a little OLA. 3-0 Giants. And there's the taco. Thank you, Rob Deere. And here's a little bit of trivia. The 1988 World Series Game 1, the very first game shown on German television. Very first baseball game shown on German TV. And if not for Kirk Gibson, maybe Don't Cut the D-Block Dragon would have become an Oakland A's fan. And now that brings up David Bell. Bell on the 2-0, pops this one up on the infield. First baseman McGuire there to make the catch. Two down. Marvin Bernard. Payoff pitch. Bernard check swing. Strike three. Smoke gets the K. But Stewart gets smoked. Another run comes in. A home run by the Giants at the end of four. It's one to nothing. The 2002 Giants. 
You know, when you're right, you're right. We spent a little bit of the broadcast talking about the lack of pop by JT Snow. Just six home runs in the regular season, but he can hit it when it counts most. And if you know anything about Monday Night Baseball, it's that the home runs come from the most unlikely of sources. Steinbach, Weiss, and Gallego scheduled hitters against Jason Schmidt here in the fifth. Fly to center. Steinbach is retired. One down. And now it's Walt Weiss's turn. Weiss, first pitch to him. Grounds to short, deep in the hole. Aurelia will make the play. Weiss retired, two down. And now it's Gallego, Mike Gallego. Payoff pitch on 3-2, swing and a miss, strike three. The A's retired in order, going to the bottom of five at Pac Bell. Well, I've used the 007-373-5963 pack before to get diamond and uh, perfect cards. I am going to enter the code now for the A's to win. I'm sorry, but I'm an A's fan. And as a streamer, I'm allowed to do this. I've entered the code. 007-373-5963. That's the cheat code to get the A's back in this game. Dave Stewart on for inning number five. 2-2 two -two pitch to Kenny Lofton. Lofton skies one to center. Dave Henderson camps underneath it. We're out number one. That brings up Aurelia, who is 0 for 2 so far. Rich Aurelia. Aurelia smacks this the other way. Base hit right field. And that is not good news for the A's. Aurelia on first, and now you really start getting into the fun portion of the order. Kent is at the plate. Bonds is on deck. You have got to pound the strike zone against Jeff Kent. Boy, would Dave Stewart love to roll up a double play here. That's why it's a pitcher's best friend. Runner going. Throw down to second. My goodness. Dusty Baker rolls the dice again. Sends a runner again. And for a second time, Terry Steinbach throws to second and guns down a runner. So now Jeff Kent is at the plate with a 1-1 count and the base is empty. Kent flies to right. Canseco fighting the win makes the catch for out number three. So Bonds will come up with the bases empty in the sixth. At the end of five, it's San Francisco three and Oakland nothing. Top of the order for the 1989 Athletics. Ricky Henderson, your leadoff man. You can debate all you want about greatest home run hitter of all time, greatest pitcher of all time. A lot of those are very debatable. But one argument I don't know if you'll get from anyone is the greatest leadoff hitter of all time. And I think at the age of 30, already Ricky Henderson has won that crowd. He can hit for power. He can certainly get on base. He can hit for average. And, of course, he can steal some bases. Ricky Henderson has really rewritten the record book when it comes to leadoff men in Major League Baseball history. Ricky at the plate leading off. Here's the 1-2 from Jason Schmidt. Ricky swing and a miss for strike three. So Jason Schmidt has enough of that conversation, says, you know what? I'll lead off the inning by striking out the greatest leadoff man of all time. Come and get your claim. Claim those packs. Let me know how those pack drops are going for you. I, I would open my own packs. Don't have enough time. Got to call a baseball game. Carney Lansford, 336 hitter this year. 336. Amazingly enough, he's actually hit 336 before. Came in his first season in Boston with the Red Sox back in 1981. 336 average then. Now, he only played in 102 games that year for Boston. And this year, at the age of 32, already with a 336 average. And lost in all of that, Carney Lansford also with 37 stolen bases in the 1989 season.
I'd love to get him on base. He will not do so here. Ground ball out to JT Snow, two down. And that brings up Jose Canseco. Can we get some Jose Canseco love in chat? Does anybody have a Dr. D Jose Canseco subscriber emo? We need all the help we can get, chat. Don't you want a game? Don't you want to see a contest here? It's 3 nothing for crying out loud. We don't have one of those, Ezra. Come on. Come on. Behave. There we go. Uh-oh. And the chants are coming down here in San Francisco. Yeah, they're letting Jose Canseco know. Maybe he is needed a little bit of a, a boost, so to speak. One of those FKN Commish LB boosts. Maybe somebody cashed in a bunch of points to get those ratings up. Slight enhancement, if you catch my drift. Canseco at the plate. Nobody on. Two out. One, two pitch. Canseco swings and misses at strike three. Another K for Schmidt. Going to the bottom of six. The Giants still on top. Three to nothing. Well, from Canseco striking out to end the sixth to now Barry Bonds starting off the sixth. What a night right now for Schmidt. Seven Ks through six scoreless innings. Definitely has the upper hand right now on Dave Stewart. Stewart, 81 pitches and counting as he begins the sixth. I wouldn't be surprised if Larusa calls for an intentional walk here. The 1-0, they'll pitch to him. Bonds grounds to short. Barry Bonds held in check so far. Outside of that first walk, his first plate appearance, now a strikeout, and then just there, a ground ball out. Barry Bonds, 0 for 2. And Santiago is at the plate. Benito Santiago, hitless in two at bats. The 0 2 pops it up on the infield. Shortstop, Weiss calling everybody off. Quickly, two down. Don't forget, seventh inning stretch tonight, we will be doing the emote race. So if you have a favorite emote in chat, the wave, the black cat, or the siren, get them ready for the seventh inning stretch. Reggie Sanders first pitch swinging. High fly ball to center. Dave Henderson underneath it for out number three. The Giants retired in order. Six innings in the books in the battle by the bay. The Bay Bridge Series round two. The Giants in control, three to nothing. All right, it's a cleanup batter, Mark McGuire, to lead off the top of the seventh. Mark McGuire, 33 home runs this year, considerably down from that rookie year, where Big Mac took the baseball world by storm. 289 average, 49 home runs in his first full major league season. Here's the 3-0. Big Mac's going to spit on that fastball for ball four. So the A's have the leadoff man aboard for Dave Parker. Parker, 97 RBI in the regular, in the regular season. 2-2 two -two pitch. Schmidt dug deep. In fact, he just blew him away with that changeup. We talk about that wipeout changeup and with Schmidt consistently pitching in the mid-90s. That 81-mile-an-hour changeup is just lethal. Replay brought to you by Nicola. That was a big K for Schmidt, his eighth. Now it's Dave Henderson. Hendu hitless in two at-bats. First pitch on the way. Henderson swings at that pitch, going the other way. Curving foul. It is caught out and right by Sanders. And now it's Terry Steinbach. Steiny on the 2-1. Pops it up. And that should do it. Second baseman Kent calls everybody off. We head to the bottom of the seventh. It is time for the emote race on Monday Night Baseball. I'm not going to lie. 
This is my favorite part of the night. Favorite part right here. Who is ready for the emote race? If you're a first timer, here is how it goes. There are three three emotes ready to race the first across the finish line wins the only way those emotes are going to move though is with your help so on the count of three i want you to spam chat with one of those three emotes tacos are not accepted but always welcome one two three go all right, and they're off. Let's see who wins the emote race on Monday Night Baseball. They're going to be off, and holy cow, look at that. Look at that siren go. Oh, and there's a big wave, big old wave. Holy cow, it's not even close. It's a wipeout. The cat didn't even get off the starting line, and my, oh my, the wave has dominated on monday night baseball have you ever seen an emote race end so quickly i don't even care what happens in this game now the wave has won and there's the kraken release the kraken that has been the emote race on monday night baseball now if you'll excuse me the Wave is going to have to shrink down to size. That will happen when you use too much of the juice. It will start to shrink. And welcome back to Pac Bell Park Monday Night Baseball. Giants A's battle by the bay. It's been all San Francisco. Three nothing Giants. Two sack flies in the second, and then a solo home run by JT Snow in the fourth. And JT is at the plate again. Dave Stewart here for inning number seven. He's given up all three runs through six innings. Payoff pitch on 3-2, and he hit him. Second hit batsman of the night. First, it was Conseco for the A's. And now it's Snow for the Giants. J.T. Snow is on first. And now it's David Bell. Bell, former Cleveland Indian, St. Louis Cardinal, Seattle Mariner. And now a first-year San Francisco Giant. A little bit of extra pop in the lineup. 261 average with 20 home runs in the regular season. Stewart. Glares in for the sign from Steinbach. Flashes the sign. First pitch. They squared a bunt. Stewart comes off the rubber. Makes the play. Throws to first. Runner will advance. Snow in scoring position. Off that sacrifice bunt by David Bell. The North always remembers. Winter is coming. Snow may be coming. He is on second for Marvin Bernard. 2-2, two, two, wrong up on strike three. So, and strike out by Stewart. Fourth K for him. That was a big one. Two outs and Kenny Lofton. Lofton had a sacrifice fly in the second. This one will not be deep enough to do much of anything. Pop up. To end the seventh, we head to the eighth in San Francisco. The Giants of 2002 all over the 89 A's, three to nothing. All right, we've got about 30 minutes left in this broadcast. Weiss, Gallego, and Henderson scheduled hitters for the A's here in the eighth. And Jason Schmidt has been marvelous jason schmidt seven innings three hits no runs one walk and eight strikeouts if you look close enough out in right field you can see those k cards being hung out and right amongst that brick wall out in right field weiss behind in the count this could be k number nine and it will jason schmidt another strikeout Nine K's for the ace. 
Now it's 2-1. Mike Gallego, grounder, second base. Jeff Ken makes the play two down. All right, here comes Ricky Henderson, who's hitless in three at-bats. After coming over from New York in a mid-season trade, Ricky batting 294, nine home runs and 306 at-bats. Full count pitch, Ricky skies one to center. And making the catch is Lofton for out number three. The Giants retire the side in order as we head to the bottom of the eight. Aurelia, Kent, and Bonds. Two, three, four in the order. Some would argue the most difficult part of the Giants' order. And Dave Stewart, believe it or not, still on the hill. So no bullpen yet for the master of the relief efforts. Of course, we're talking about Tony La Russa. He's not dug into that pen just quite yet. 0-2 pitch. A strikeout rung up by Dave Stewart, his fifth. So Aurelia down on strikes. And Jeff Kent at the plate. Kent on the 0-1. Right off the mound. It hits Stewart. Ricochets over to the shortstop. And Weiss makes the play. Another look on the replay brought to you by the Real Teddy O. Boy, that went off of Stewart's calf there. And the shortstop, Weiss, is there to make the play. What a play. And now it's Barry Bonds. Hit list in two at bats. Barry on the one, two. Fly ball to center. Henderson makes the grab for out number three. We go to the ninth at Pac Bell. The Giants leading the A's three to nothing. And folks, welcome back. It is time for a Beetle Boy 911 emergency call to the bullpen. Standing ovation during that break as Jason Schmidt comes out of the dugout, steps on the top rail, gives a nod, takes off the cap, and the San Francisco faithful loving what Schmidt did for them here tonight. Eight scoreless innings, three hits allowed, one walk, and nine strikeouts. And he turns things over to Rob Nen. Nen, 2.20 ERA in 2002. 43 saves. Nen to close it out. He'll have the two, three, and four hitters for the Athletics. Lansford, Canseco, and McGuire. Carney Lansford, one for three tonight. The 0-1 to Carney. Trying to spark a late inning rally. Base hit. Center field. Carney leads off the ninth with a single. Now the question is, do you run Carney? The run doesn't mean anything. But getting him in scoring position and taking away a double play ball could be big. Carney Lansford. 37 stolen bases in the regular season. Nen from the stretch. The 1-0. Fly ball. Center field off the bat of Canseco. Caught out in center by Lofton. So Lansford retreats back to first. One away. That brings up the big bopper. Mark McGuire. It listen to AB so far. The one, two, called strike three, and the A's are down to their final out. Split finger right down Broadway. I think McGuire thought it was going to dip a little bit more, but it nicked the bottom of that strike zone. Replay brought to you by Mr. W. Norris. And now it comes down to Dave Parker. The A's and the Bash brothers held in check. Crowd on its feet here at Pac Bell. 1-0 pitch from Nen. From the stretch, here we go. Parker, fly ball, center field at the track and caught. Giants shutting out the A's in the Bay Bridge Series Redux. 
A shutout victory for the 2002 Giants. They take down the 1989 A's 3-0. Your final in the city by the bay. All right, let's get to your post game show because we got to pay the bills. It is your post game show brought to you by EVC in NYC too. You can join EVC every Wednesday for guess the set on Twitch, 2 p.m. Pacific every Wednesday, only on Twitch. That vaunted Oakland A's lineup of 1989, limited to just four hits, didn't score a single run against Jason Schmidt and Rob Nen. Final score tonight from San Francisco, Giants 3, A's nothing. Offensively for the Giants, believe it or not, Barry Bonds held in check. Had just that one leadoff walk. That was it. Barry Bonds 0 for 3 as he was held in check. A couple of sacrifice flies by the Giants in the second. And then a mammoth home run by... J.T. Snow going the other way as he gets that home run. And that was all the Giants would need. Dave Stewart will take the loss. Eight innings, five hits, three runs, three walks, five strikeouts. That has been your postgame show here at Pac Bell, where the Giants of 2002 topple the 1989 Oakland Athletics three to nothing. Now, a scheduling note, we will be playing Game 2 and Game 3, if necessary, on my channel tomorrow, starting at noon Pacific, noon Pacific on Dr. Dynastic. I'm going to have to roll that cheat code. All right. All right. So, there we go. Giants win. Giants win. And it looks like it will be Russ Ortiz and Mike Moore in game two tomorrow. Now, one of the things you can't do on Monday Night Baseball, we don't have the technology, but if somebody were to maybe put in chat that they want the Arnold Schwarzenegger redemption, free of charge, I'll give it to you. I'll do it. We do it on the Dr. Dynastic channel. We cannot do it here, but if somebody wants it, I will do it. Let's go ahead and return to the OOTP main screen. And there we go. That is music to my ears. When I see that, two packs, knowing I'm a PT Plus subscriber. That means four. Yeah, it comes fan 23 Steve wants to see the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hi, look at that. I have four. Four packs, not two. <laughs> With a Dr. Dynastico, it is me, Arnold. Look at all those packs I've gotten. Hi. Yeah. I did not like the result of that game. No, not at all. The Giants all over the A's. I prefer seeing all those teams from California play against each other. I am from Austria, but I consider California my, my second place. It is California first. Austria second, and New Mexico third. Do not ask me about New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. so it is uh, a perfect team baseball. Let's get to it. Enough of that. But if you ever want to do it, you can go ahead and redeem that tomorrow on my stream. Promise I won't do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to give you a, I'm not going to promise things I can't, I can't deliver on. So, oh, look at that. Jose Canseco with a... Bomb for the A's, my Oakland 42s in theme team. Six to five. We lose. I can't get a win anywhere. I can't get a win anywhere. My oh my. All right. How are your teams doing right now? Let me know in chat how you're are you playing theme team? I'm guessing you are. Uh either that or your main team. However, you play. There's no wrong way to play.
I'm just making sure I'm getting my pack drops. And I am. Maybe, I know, poor Doc. Maybe I'd feel better if I would just open some packs and get like an awesome card. That would make me feel really good. A Jesus Alou makes me feel a little bit better. And Eduardo Perez doesn't make me feel better at all. Eh, maybe a little bit. Hero Drivers got a main randomly dropped into the TTC Diamond League this morning. Okay. Well, that is awesome. There's my Randy Johnson duplicate card. Go ahead and throw that back in the truffle shuffle. I would love to get what you just mentioned, Ezra. I'll have what you're having. The Mike Marshall. The Mike's mission. And Jeremy Burnett did not play so well when he was that. No, I always confuse Burnett's and Richie Sexton. I get those two confused. You know, what would make me feel better is playing a little immaculate grid. Not going to do it today. Oh boy. Shea Hillebrand. Casey Cox. I cannot take it past 100. Cannot take it any lower than 100. Hmm. Okay. So maybe, maybe Sex and Ann Burnitz are the same person. All lives. A lot of historicals. There's a Kelvin Escobar or Kelvin. Don't know which one. I would say Kelvin, but I could be wrong. That's part of your Jay's history. Laptop Hound would be very happy with this. Sandy Koufax. We'll go ahead and sell that. And Hal Schumacher. Hal Schumacher. Oh, let me ask this. Um, is Lost Duck TW in the house? Is Lost Duck in the house by any chance? Okay, looks like we only have a few more cards to see. Ugh. Uh, no Monday Night Baseball stream next week, folks. No Monday Night Baseball stream. Uh, I had entertained the thought of maybe doing a recorded version of it. I don't know how that would work or if I can do it. So I'm going to talk to the powers that be. But it looks like uh, we will not have Monday Night Baseball. I will be out of town. I'll be out of town on vacation for that entire week, unfortunately. And I'll be in a place where I cannot stream at all. Johnny Pesky. The Pesky Pole. 249. Thank you very much, Ezra. I'll be doing, I think I mentioned to you. Uh yeah, I'll be doing uh I'll be doing prison time. I'll be back in uh, you know, four to six. And last pack, last pack. And Ron Karkovice. Wow, I mean that was all worth it. That makes me feel so good. And by so good, I mean so bad. Boy, oh boy. That was sad. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things we'll be doing actually is uh, going to Disney World for the first time. Hey, buddy, your voice is criminally smooth. I'm running you in. <laughs> Do you have any idea how fast your voice was going, sir? I clocked you at 88 words per minute. Yeah, I, I can't even let you off with a warning, sir. Your license and registration to speak, please. Hmm. Well, what else would make me feel good? I, now I just feel like I'm just making all sorts of mistakes here. Let's go ahead and treat ourselves to see if I can get it to work. Let's get a diamond. I don't know why I'm feeling frisky. 
Okay, chat. What do we think? What's in the diamond? And I mean, I can guarantee a diamond because I opened a diamond pack. I have a poetic license. Kershaw is one prediction. It's got to be a, this is a lie or this is a standard diamond pack. So it could be anything. Could be anything. Oh, there are plenty of live diamonds that are A's. Hero Driver. There is Sean Murphy. And there is uh, Matt Olson. Spotswood Pulls. Let's hope for that. Let's hope for that. All right, we got 15 minutes left on stream today, guys. I would love a Lou. I would love a Harper. I would... Well, the Maguire, uh, was Maguire tournament? Yeah, maybe Maguire's, yeah, Maguire's in play. I would love that. I, I thought maybe for a reason, I thought for some reason, I thought Maguire might have been a tournament card. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and see what is the diamond. Matt Olson, we called it. We called it. That's, this is a perfect card right here. We're calling it that that uh, that's going to be by the time I get back from vacation, that's going to be a perfect. I told you we'd get an A, right? We would get an A and we did. OK, well, let's go back to the main screen. And. We've got a couple teams ready to go. Daily Historical. Big shout out to uh, Warbot TBD for hanging out with my stream earlier today on Dr. Dynastic. We fielded the team, kind of tweaked that team a little bit to get it into the Daily Historical. We'll see how that turns out. Ezra, thanks for coming by. Remember Ezra Denny, out of the park, after dark, weeknights, many weeknights, 8.30 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for hanging out. I know how much you love board game night. My best to you and the missus. Well, why don't we wrap things up by running a little perfect draft? You and me together, guys. You and me together. Uh, let's go ahead and what do you think? What do you think? I would love to get a choice. I'd love to get a choice pack. And we'd like to have it be a 64. I, uh, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's go ahead and go with, I'd like to get some sort of historical. Tuesday, get a pro, go for the 256er. Now, is that one of the leagues here? Here we go. Which one is that? Let's look at that. Tuesday. Tuesday orderly up higher. There it is. Get a professional in here. Okay, so that's 1986 settings. Choice pack. Let's do it, guys. We're in. We are in. We're going to draft this together. 1986 settings. To end this stream here. Uh, 86 settings. Uh, no DH. Playing at Shea. 1986. All right. No DH. Remember that, okay? All right, guys. We're drafting together. Let's do it in the next 12 minutes. Turbo draft style. Here we go. Come on. Let's get a little bit of luck. A little bit of luck here. We want that all important first rounder. It really, I think drafts are won and lost in this and diamond. Oh, okay. Well, we got the Fred McGriff card. That's solid. The Herbie card. Mm. The Ventura card. New. No. There is the Granky, and I think the Granky is it might be the right answer here. Guys, what do you think? What do you think? Let me know in chat. Which card are we going for here? 
Not really a great first round for us. McGriff, Jansen, Herb, Herbeck, Hoffman, Ventura, or Grinky. I've got one vote for Granky, and that's what I'm kind of leaning towards, but I want to see if anybody else concurs. Hopeless is with me. I think that's the eyes have it. Let's go with Granky. Granky it is. Next up. Everybody's going Granky. There we go. All right, next up, do we go all pitching or do we get some offense? We've got the Halliday 98 card. We've got Hanley Ramirez. We've got a couple shortstop options. Hanley's glove, though, probably prohibitive. I love this holiday card. That's funny. We've got holiday and holiday in the same round. This is Jackson Holiday, who would be a fantastic second baseman for us. Brian Giles. That Babip is low. Jimmy Key. I think holiday is the way to go. Holiday is a second baseman. Halliday, Holiday, Ramirez. Or there's Hanley, Halliday, and Holiday. Hanley, Halliday, Holiday. Triple H. We're going to go with Jackson Holiday, but we're probably going to pencil him in as a second baseman, not a shortstop. All right. There's the Mike Scott card. Mike Scott could be very fantastic. There's Cargo. This is the 86 professional Tuesday. Tuesday professional 86 conditions playing at Shea. Which Saber Hagen is this? It's a good one. That would be a decent one. Could tell Marte, no thank you. I'm almost thinking of getting... I, I'm seriously leaning towards Mike Scott here. If anybody has any strong opinions, speak now or forever hold your peace. Got nine minutes before end of stream. Nine minutes. We need to get this stream done. I'm leaning towards Mike Scott. I mean, Mike Scott pitched for the Mets at one point, and then, of course, for the Astros after that. We'll go ahead and take Scott. So we got a good one-two punch. Oh, this Julio card. Boy, oh, boy. This Julio card. Highly recommend getting this Julio card, but it looks like already everybody's banking on him going up to Diamond after the week he had. My goodness. John Olerud? Hmm. Thought his ratings would be higher on that card. Hey, we mentioned Richie Sexton. There he is. Great eye, great power. Playable. A.J. Reed might be the play here. A.J. Reed might be the play. Uh, there's the bow card. Bow with that fantastic power. That power is crazy. We can take two cards. I'm thinking A.J. Reed and Bo Jackson. Let me look at this A.J. Reed card one more time. I'm going to go with those two guys. All right, there's Carney Lansford from... Which year is this? 89. There's our Carney from 1989. Unfortunately, his defensive rating as a third baseman is pretty abysmal. I always like the FL cards. The Joey Weimer could be a fantastic outfielder for us. Fantastic. Uh, Michael Bush. Michael Bush could play a bunch of different positions. That would be a fun one. Uh, Willie Randolph. I is great. The Babip is great. I love this card. I love this Willie Randolph card. That 
If we get Willie, that means that we're going to have to move. We would keep Jackson Holiday at short. And that's what's going to happen. We're going to take this Willie Randolph card. Uh, the Hideo Nomo card is interesting, though the lack of control is a little bit frightening. Did I look at Guzman already? Again, lack of control. Well, we could get Carney and put him over a third. I think we could do that. I think our infield is now set. Not great defense. Uh, we have one outfielder so far. Got five minutes left on stream. Daniel Espino. I love this card. I think that'd be a great one. Brian Roberts card, also promising. Odalis Perez, if we want to keep on building our rotation, but I think three starters is enough for the moment. There's a Hunter Pence card. Hunter Pence, I think, is it. Let's go with Hunter. So our outfield is almost set. Jay Bruce, let's just take a gander. And Inciarte. Wow, look at that defense for Inciarte. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we'll hold off on that one, but that was tempting. We'll go ahead and take those two. Theme team is pack only as of now. Could change for Brent. Uh, let's see. We need another outfielder. We need some bullpen arms. We Oh, we don't have a catcher. Uh, this just in. <laughs> we do not have a catcher. I don't know if uh, Francisco Alvarez is the way we want to start on that. But I do want to do this. Eric Davis as a left fielder or center fielder. That's a no-brainer. We want to have Eric Davis in there. Eric Davis has entered the chat. Uh, go Sean Barry. No, he needs to play more positions. Bonifacio. Yeah, Bonifacio will take. Just because he can play all those positions for us. We need catchers now. Like now, now, now. Not a single, uh, there's Alejandro Kirk. I'm trying to avoid these live catchers. How many have we seen? We've only seen two catchers so far. Okay, now I don't feel so bad. So catchers will be a coming. Uh, thank you for mentioning that, Jason. Uh, there's this fantastic Kim card. We want to pick up a nice closer. That could work for us. Um, what else? Luis Castillo can probably only play second. It is a decent card. There's a Woody Williams if we want to round out a rotation. I'm in no rush to do that. Um, but may not have a choice. Let's look at the Graham Laloid. Very splitty. We don't want that. Might be Woody. Might be Woody. That would round out a rotation. Did I look at this card, Garrier? Mm, not really sold on that one. I think we're good with these two. Uh, Woody Williams. Uh, we've got our four-man rotation, so we don't need... Oh, there's a Kurt Schilling. That Schilling card would have been fantastic. I should have waited. Oh, well. Uh, catcher, still nada. Still nada. And a ton of starting pitchers here. Well, that's unfortunate. Can we build up the bullpen? Could find a... Now, let's look at this Larry Walker card. Larry can only play right. That's not good. Okay, now what I'm looking for is a starting pitcher with two fantastic pitchers and not much else.
you know, honestly, this Nunez card is pretty good. Utrina Ball will be good. I know, round 13 is going to have like eight of these. Dandridge, you say. Dandridge, you say? Did I miss him? Maybe I missed him already. I didn't see him. Uh, you got a theme team in desperate need of middle infielders. Says JC Jams. Well, did I look at the Cliff Floyd yet? Floyd can play left and right and not much else. Uh, Cavelli. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm just, I'm just getting skunked here. I might just go shilling. No, I'm not. I'm not going to go shilling. I look at Rio yet. Let's go with Rio. Rio. And I have way too many starting pitchers. If you've ever seen me before on stream, you know, I never take pitchers. And now all I'm taking is pitchers. And yes, more catchers, but they're live cards. Wow. I am Fukudome. There's Fukudome. Uh, he can play center and right. I need a guy who can play all four outfield positions is what I'm looking for. Chad Pinder. Nope. Look at that. They throw three catchers all lives. I'm not liking any of these catchers. None of them. Uh, are we going to take another pitcher? Another starting pitcher? I can take Cabrera up the middle. I already have two shortstops and a second baseman. I don't need another. Well, we're going to take Fukudome. That'll take care of center field and right. Maybe we just take Pinder, too. I don't like that card, though. Well. We're just going to take a Tom Gordon, then. And hope that pitching beats hitting. And please give me a catcher for the love of Pete. Can I get a historic catcher here? Oof. I am sweating. All right, so we got four outfielders. We got Bellhorn. Bellhorn is splitty and usable. He can play a bunch of positions. There's Austin Jackson. Hi, hi, Babip. Cronenworth. And I look at Broxton yet. Nope. Marco Scudero. Hmm. I don't like any of this. Now we do have D, uh, no DH, no DH in this league. Correct. Let's see. Sean Dunstan. I don't like any of this, sir. Even Manoa's showing up here. My goodness. All right. Can you play left at least? This guy can't even play left. Nelson Cruz, can you play left? Ugh. Is it time to wave the white flag? I think it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and take Nelson Cruz. I do not like this. Catcher. I've never seen a run like this. There was a historic catcher in the first round, and then nothing. Nothing. I'm going to have to take Caratini now. I'm going to take the Hasegawa card, because I love that Shigatoshi card. But I don't see any catchers. I'm going to have to take uh, Higashioka here. And, um, wow. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, don't know yet. Don't know yet, Brent. 
I got to focus on the trap here, buddy. I am, uh, I am, I am, uh, swimming. I'm drowning here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Well, guys, it was a good run. You know what? I will take the Nido card, actually. Nido. I don't know how to pronounce it. This is seriously the worst catcher draft, if you can call it a draft ever. Okay, pitcher wise, uh, we have six, nine, so we need three more pitchers. <sighs> what does it matter at this point? Holy cow. Awful, awful, awful. And last one. I've never seen a run of catchers like this. And then last one. I don't even have any. Out, I have nothing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, which which one? I mean, they, none of them were. I mean. Seriously, none of them were much better than, than the ones I got. Even the live catchers were brutal. All right, we'll take Clint Frazier and that'll do it. Wow. Okay. Well, that's depressing. That is just really depressing. Well, at least my starting pitching's good. We're going to find out how good pitching is and how important pitching is. I will say at least we've got a decent defensive catcher. Our lineup is um not the greatest. Not the greatest. Well. Okay, folks. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so that is a wrap on Out of the Park, folks. There's a look at our scoreboard. If you'd like to see, I mean, who knows? Maybe you just want to follow me on Twitch. That is my page right there. And because. We have the scoreboard up here. If anybody decides to follow or do anything else, that scoreboard right there is going to change with your name on it right there in front of the world to see. Now, there is, unfortunately, no one playing out of the park baseball right now. Not a single streamer is on to take out of the park 24 which is just mind blowing to me, mind blowing. I would, I would uh, love to send you guys into another channel, but unfortunately there's not a single person to be seen. So I tell you what, uh, I hope this is allowed, but I'm going to just find another channel that I follow and maybe we'll go ahead and raid into them. I think we're going to help our buddy Neo Fox out. Play a little guitar riff. What's that? Well, oh boy. Yeah. Rich, Rich does it. Why don't I do it, right? Folks, my schedule is on the screen right now. I will be back on tomorrow at noon. Is it noon? Noon Pacific. Yeah, noon Pacific. And I hope you'll consider joining me as we uh, play a little bit of Out of the Park Baseball. And again, there will be no... There will be no stream next Monday. Unfortunately, dear old Doc will not be in the building. But I'll be thinking of you. I'll be back on all week long, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, doing 10-pack giveaways. We're also doing this thing right here. Our sponsor showcase. Tomorrow's stream is sponsored, which means that a by participating in that challenge, you'll be able to rack up a bunch of free prizes uh, as a thank you for that. But that's not my place to discuss right now. 
I just want to say thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed Monday Night Baseball. And don't forget the Out of the Park schedule on your screen right now. The Mothership back on tomorrow at 6 p.m. with TJ Lowerman, 6 p.m. And then Dish is in the house Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. That's a wrap. We're going to raid on over to a channel called Neo Fox. Uh, Neo Fox is playing uh, that new game, Star Citizen. Please send him some love. Tell him Dr. Dynastic says hello. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one. Have a great week. And I hope to see you tomorrow on my channel, Dr. Dynastic. So long. Adios, pelota.